Section 9.2, example 4. So some more hypothesis testing. So in 2007, according to the National Institute of Drug Abuse, 31.72% of 12th graders had abused marijuana the prior year. So a few things I learned from this sentence. Um, this sounds like an old or a claimed value, 31.72. So that'll be my um, hypothesis at some point. Um, it also sounds like we're in proportion land because we're doing abuse marijuana or not as a variable. And a percent is also a big hint towards proportions. So these are things I think about before I even go too far. Proportion land. So I shouldn't see mu anywhere. So since then, efforts for uh, uh, as anti-drug education programs have been implement, implemented to deter drug use. So we have a current sample of 218, n equals 218, 12th graders, indicated that 64 of them had abused marijuana in the last year. So that means my sample, p hat, will be 64 out of 218 who had abused marijuana. So let's perform a hypothesis test at 5% to determine if the true percentage of 12th graders that abused marijuana has decreased from the 2007 level. So people are maybe curious if this program is working or not. So this is how they could prove if a program is working. So we're in proportion land, so my hypothesis involves P. Um, the claim value is 0.3172, and decreased means less than. So if we can get that number less than 31%, then maybe we can prove the program is working. And then step two, we'll go ahead and state alpha, and then we'll go ahead and check out the sample. So alpha will be 0.05. Um, so let's go ahead and check out the sample, and then we'll find the z-score and p-value. So my sample tells me that n is 218, p-hat is 64 out of 218, which I think gives me 0.2936. So a little bit smaller than 31, but I don't know if it's small enough, right? It could just be random, and maybe the program was doing nothing. So let's find the z-score. We'll take p-hat minus p0. So 0.2936 minus 0.3172, all over the square root of P0, 1 minus P0 over N. So 0.3172, 1 minus 0.3172, all over 218, and then all of that's in a square root. So go ahead and calculate or watch me. Make sure you let me know right away if you're making calculator errors so I can help you fix those. So you should be getting negative 0.7487, which rounds up to negative 0.749. So this is within two standard deviations. So it's probably just random, but again, the p-value is going to assess that risk. So let's draw the normal curve. Um, we have a z-score of negative 0.749, and then we are proving less than, so we're gonna shade to the left. Left for less than. So we're gonna find the area. So we're not doubling, because it's not two-tailed, we're just gonna find a single area. So since we're on the left side, we have negative infinity is a, as my lower, so p-value is normal CDF, negative infinity, or negative 10 to the 99, up to negative 0.749. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be too risky because that z-score is within 2. And yeah, we're getting like 22%. 0.2269, which is way beyond our cutoff of 05. So basically between 0 and 05 would be little risk. And then so 2269 is way outside that range. It's too much risk. We're not going to reject. So if the program is not working, if the percent is staying the same, there's a 22% chance this would happen randomly. And 22 can easily happen. That's almost one out of five. So that's way too risky. We will not reject. So 
So we're not rejecting that the proportion is the same. It could still be equal. So instead of saying there's strong evidence, we'll say there's not enough evidence. Or there is not strong evidence, if you want to be consistent, um, at 5% to show marijuana abuse has decreased. So basically, we were not able to reject the equal case, so that means we can't prove H1, which is P is less than 0.3172. So there's not enough evidence to show marijuana abuse has decreased for 12th graders. So we just have a few follow-up questions um, regarding the same sample. And then we'll um, look at means in the next section. So we're gonna compute a 90% confidence interval for the same data. So I'm just gonna copy um, the sample data down. So N was 218 and P hat was 0.2936. That's from my sample. So those are just from up here. All right, so we want to compute a 90% confidence interval for the true percentage. So again, that's proportion land of 12th graders that abused marijuana in the last year. Um, and I just want to show you how confidence intervals were actually giving us similar results. So the confidence interval was P hat plus or minus C times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. So we need Q hat, which is 1 minus 0.2936 or 0 0.7064, um, and then we'll go ahead and find the z-score. So get that formula down, and then draw the z-score, and then we'll start in a second. So this is back from chapter eight, so we're gonna put 90% in the middle. So each tail gets 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, so I'm just going to go to the 05 column on the table. I find it faster than the calculator. Um, we're looking at z-score, so that was the very last row. So 05 is the second, so I get 1.645. So we have 1.645 on the right, and then negative 1.645 on the left. Right, That plus or minus is taken care of the fact that there's two. All right, so if you remember confidence intervals, why don't you do this without me? Good practice. Uh, so we'll take the sample value, 0 0.2936, plus or minus C score, square root 0 0.2936, times 0 0.7064, all over 218. We're using sample values, not the hypothesis, because we don't have a hypothesis for confidence intervals. All right, so we will get 0 0.2936 plus or minus. .0507. So just typing the whole plus or minus piece in your calculator. And then I like to subtract first and we'll say P is in the interval. So PE is in some interval. 0.2936 minus 0 0.0507. So the lower bound is 2429 up to 2936 plus 0507, which is 0.3443. And that's our confidence interval. And I'll show you how this gives us the same result. So how does this agree with the hypothesis test? So our decision in part A was we did not reject HO, and HO was P equals 0.3172, meaning we couldn't prove it's different. So it agrees because if P is in this interval, 0.2429 to 0.3443, right, any number in this interval is possible meaning 
0.3172 is still possible because it's in between the numbers. So it doesn't mean it equals 31.72%, but it means it's still possible. It agrees because if P is in 24.29 up to 34.43, then it's possible P is still 0.3172, meaning the program didn't do anything. Um, do we know that it equals that? No, we just know any number in this interval is possible. Um, and then let's talk about error. So again, we did not reject, so that'll be important with the type of errors we could have made. So we did not reject, meaning type one is not possible. Type one is only if you reject. Um, type two would have happened if HO was false, meaning I'm putting HO as false in parentheses because I want to write this in everyday language. So type two would have happened if marijuana abuse. So HO is saying marijuana abuse is the same. So HO false would mean marijuana abuse actually did decrease. Because that would be P less than 0.3172. So we would have made a type two error if in reality, um, 12th graders were using less marijuana. But we don't know that, right? This is just a big if.